topic for today is sexual desires and self-control. Can you imagine? That is a popular one. It's a popular demand. And when I had that topic, I was like, Father, where are we going now? How am I going to do it? So I'm going to depend on him. And every word that is going to be said, and for the, for the first time, I think maybe for the first time, I have not been so guilty. Throughout the night, I was unable to sleep. Hello. You know when people put, uh, ask for something, and they are expecting, better seek the face of God for direction. I believe that he will lead me even as I go through today's message in Jesus' name. A Bible passage is taken from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. The first book of Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 3 to 5. Please do me a favor. We can open to it and I'm sure. Oh, thank you Lord. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 3 to 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3 to... Hello. All right. Thank you. So it, 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 it reads... Okay. But this is... Are you hearing me? Yeah. Okay. Okay, for this is the will of God that you should be consecrated separated and set apart for pure and holy living. That you should abstain and shrink from all sexual vice. That each one of you should know how to possess. In the bracket says the control, manage his own body in consecration, purity, separated from things profane, and honor. Not to be used in the passion of lust like the hidden, who are ignorant of the truth of God and have no knowledge of his will. Praise the living God. So it's a very, very special topic before me. I believe that the Lord will help me. I will quickly say that sexual loss simply means to be engaged, engaged in um, sexual immorality. And it's sexual immorality of any kind, any sort of sexual activities outside of marriage, and that includes overt, overt actions, subtle actions, thoughts, attitude, and so on and so forth. It is said that this is man's great this is man's greatest weakness. I want to say here that men have given up on their children, their families, their wives, their career, their reputation, and even their hope of heaven for sexual pleasures. And it all starts off sometimes very, very small. Just by a glance, then it slides into the pit of hell. Oftentimes, you hear uh, a man fell. A man fell into sexual sin. No, he didn't fall. The man did not fall. The man just slided into it. It was gradual. Praise the living God. So we see men slide by compromise. Men slide by compromise. Small comprom compromises that are largely unseen, unrecognized, yet 
Little is discussed about it, even though the consequences are horrific. Thank you, sir. Can mute this one. God bless you. Praise the Lord. So, even though the consequences are horrific, you hardly hear it talked about. Praise the Lord. So, sexual acting out ruins marriages, ruins families, and the lives of the ones that are engaged in this wrongful behavior. And let me say two things here up front before I continue for too long. I want to say that sexual desires are created by God and it's good. Sex is God's idea. Sex is one of the best things that God ever created. And the Bible said when he created it, he said it was good. Tell your friend it was good. Uh, can you imagine? You don't want to say it. Hey, hey. However, like all the desires of the flesh, it often, it often seeks expression in a wrong way or wrong ways. And so, sexual desires has to be put under control. It has to be put under control. Tell somebody by your side, put it under control. If you, did, if you said it to the person on the left, say it to the person on the right. Put it under control. The women are so excited. Wow. So we have become a sex-saturated society. You see it on TV, the fashion, music, smart devices, all give us access and express permission for this particular scene. For this very particular scene. Whether you like it or not, you put, put on your, your, t, uh, your, your laptop, your phone, solve the internet in it. What you don't want to see will come up. Praise the Lord. So it has become the drug of choice within this culture. This culture. This one. This one. And it is spreading everywhere. It has become a drug of choice. In the past, there used to be shame associated with or guilt associated with it. When someone falls into sexual sin, you know, the person is withdrawn. The person feels guilty. is ashamed. But these days, it is with impunity. And that's why it's scary. It is very scary. So today it has become a fast food, all you can eat experience. Don't laugh. It sounds funny, but this is the truth. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, please turn with me if you are with your Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 9, the Bible describes sexual craving like it's like a burning fire. But if they cannot exercise self-control, they should marry. For it is better to marry than to burn with passion. I always say marriage can be very easy and simple. If you're a man, a girl, in the house, you're not married. Please, don't give you, don't give yourself any, any uh, uh, trouble 
thinking of how to marry. Just approach the pastor and they will, he will join you. You don't, you don't even need too much. We, in America, you don't even need a weakness. Hello. But even if your parents are back home, we can do it by Zoom and make it the whole thing very easy. Praise the living God. <clears throat> you will agree with me that this notion of self-control isn't a popular one in this culture. Where sexual gratification has been turned into an ultimate good, without which you are not fully a human being. Is that a man? Ah, is he a man? A man who doesn't have a girlfriend. Are you a man? A woman who doesn't have two or three, four partners. <laughs> Somebody once told me, he said, ah, how can I live with a man? When I said I was celebrating 30 years anniversary, 30 years with one man. I was so scared. That is the culture in which we are living. But you know, <laughs> even in Christendom, <laughs> it has crept in. It's coming. You know? Why? It's not a prophecy, it's not a wish. But, but it is here. And the Lord has promised that in these latter days we will see more. And so we should sit up, tighten our belt, and depend only on the Lord Jesus Christ. So you hear sometimes a Christian will say, ah, it's impossible to be single and not be sexually active. You mean? And can I remember when my children came on a visit to America for, for the first time to visit their father. <laughs> and so one day, they said they want to go back, they want to go back. I said, ah, you were so excited to come. We've not stayed, with you, you know, we are not supposed to go at this time. You, are, you, said, you said, daddy, 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 we have to go, we have to go. So the father came and called me and said, what is it going to ask them? Because they are all girls. And he said, in their class, everybody is discussing boyfriend and girlfriend. This one said, my, 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 my other one, my, the second, third. So she, you know, she overheard them talking. And you know, in my heart, I was telling my husband, this one that you say you want to relocate these children. Allow them to finish secondary school, oh, <laughs> so that <laughs> we will not uh, carry, you know, problem. <laughs> May the Lord help us. <laughs> so, so, and sometimes you see that Christians even begin to behave like the pagans. And believe and talk the way they talk. And think the way they think. And act the way they act. And sometimes you begin to say, are we really Christians? Hello. Praise the living God. We need to arise as Christians with a sense of dignity. As those who are made in the image of God. We have sexual desires and they are good. We are not to be ruled by them. We are not to be ruled by them. Rather, we are to, we are to control them and keep them within the boundaries of God's will for our lives. That Christians are struggling with this epidemic becomes worrisome to the church, the body of Christ, and hence, the need to have this very important teaching today. And even if it might make us a bit uncomfortable at times, the law will help you and, you know, give you self-control. 
Praise the Lord. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22, 23 says, the, the fruit of the spirit is self-control. And this is a mark of a Christian, a child of God. The word of God says you will know them by their fruit. And you know this is the fruit of the spirit and the spirit of God lives inside of us. And the only way we can identify ourselves or somebody else can know is by the fruit that we bear. So the word of God says you will know them by their fruits. So do everything to bear these fruits. Self-control. Sex was created by heaven and not by Hollywood. It was God's idea, and the Bible says what he has created, everything was good. I, I took time to repeat those. It's for emphasis. And Genesis chapter 6, you will see that the world was destroyed because Satan, due to rebellion, had, you know, the Bible said, Satan, the devil, came and had sex with the children of men. And it was sex. And the Lord had to wipe a whole generation away. So God created sex not merely for entertainment. Sex is a covenant that is entertaining. It is a covenant that is entertaining. Uh, see all of them sitting down as if they don't understand. So God, but God did not create sex merely for entertainment. Sex is a covenant that is entertaining. What we see today is that the devil has removed the covenant part of, of it and has maintained the entertainment part of it. So he presents to you something that was whole, he broke it into two and said, no, you only have half of it. The rest he kept to himself. Praise the living God. And the main major purpose of sex and the most important has been ripped off, which is the covenant part. What? <clears throat> which a secret... Uh, agreement, covenant, which is a secret agreement between God and his children, you know, the devil, that part of agreement, the devil does not want you and I to know or to practice in it or live in it. And in covenant, the Lord, you know, you know, establishes specific conditions and he promises to bless us as we obey these conditions of the covenant. So this, so he promises to bless us, but you know, at making and keeping this covenant qualifies us to receive the blessing that God has promised. So, so if, if, if the, the covenant or if sexual desires and sex in marriage is the holistic package that God has given. And you practice it outside of marriage. Then it is not holistic. And so the blessing of the covenant cannot be accrued to you. And let's quickly look at this. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And Paul speaking to the church at Corinth, said, uh, you know, this, the, Paul made this specifically to warn the church. Even though he was speaking to the church in Corinth, but it was for you and I. And this is what he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 9. And he says, do you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't fool yourselves. Those who indulge in um, sexual sin or who worship idols or commit adultery or are made 
or are male prostitutes or practice homosexuality. And simply put, this is how Paul put it. Paul, Apostle Paul, talking to the church in Corinth, said this. In this life, this lifestyle of immorality would not allow anyone to inherit the kingdom of God. Remember, he's not saying to see the kingdom of God. But he says here to inherit, to be part of it. And what Paul was really saying, the meaning of that is that you may be on your way to heaven, but heaven is not on its way to you. You may say that you are a Christian, but you are not a Christian because heaven does not recognize you as one. That is what Paul was saying. That a desire for sex, and I want to say, is a natural feeling. And this feeling is expected in every living being. And if you don't have it, it becomes a cause for concern. So this desire, or this desire must be under control. And I, I take another scripture. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, and it says, For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. He gave us the spirit. And that this spirit, one of the attributes of this spirit is self-control. So with the Holy Spirit of the living God dwelling in you, you are empowered and you are, you know, equipped to, to control yourself, control your emotions, control your thoughts, control what you look at, control what you, you know, meditate upon. Because the Holy Spirit is in you. But if the Holy Spirit is in you, you know, everybody says, I speak in tongues, I speak in tongues. But you don't have self-control. Maybe the Holy Spirit has departed. Hello. Praise the living God. So lack of self-control could just be the absence of the Holy Spirit in you. First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 5, 3 to 5. And it says, um, where am I? Yeah. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3 to 5. And he said, For this is the will of God, that you should be consecrated, separated, and set apart for pure and holy living. That you should abstain and shrink from all sexual vices. That each one of you should know how to possess, it says here, control, manage his own vessel in consecration, purity. Separated from things profane and honor, not in the passion of lust like the heathens who are ignorant of the true God and have no knowledge of his will. And the will of God is that every Christian or every Christian should possess his vessel should possess his or her vessel with self-control and manage the, your, your body in purity and in honor. <laughs> you cannot act like the unbelieving brethren. You cannot. Because there is something in you that the unbelievers do not have. You have an edge over them. So when an unbeliever is looking at the rare mirror, and he's looking and he's having an accident, you cannot afford to have it. There is something in you that will tell you that after looking at something once and the spirit says don't, you should take away your face. You have the power, you have that grace. Hallelujah. Am I becoming too hard? You notice that Christians also get into trouble because of lack of the knowledge of the word of God. 
The desire for intimacy is not a desire you can cast out of your life. It's there. It's been created. It's been put in there by God. This desire was created to be expressed within certain conditions. And it is the presence or absence of this condition that makes it right or wrong when you are talking about sexual intimacy. So sexual immorality does not care about your age. Does not even care about your mental state. I crack a joke. One of our elders came with, you know, he has some of the physically, you know, challenged uh, people in his, in his home. So sometime years ago, not now, no. Hmm. So they came, I was at the carport. And one of the physical challenge, you can see that, you know, is really physically challenged. Just approached me and said, has anybody ever told you that you are beautiful? And I said, ha, ah. inside of my heart. He did not stop there. He said, I love you and I want to have you. Life story. So whether you are mental, whether you are normal, whether you are old or young, he doesn't know it. He doesn't know it. Whether you are a pastor, or you are a minister, or you are a prophet, which other one is? <laughs> Praise the living God. You know? So it doesn't care about age or your physical state. It's a cancer that has destroyed many. You will never be destroyed by it in Jesus' name. And see, the goal of this message is not to condemn us, but to enlighten and to help us as a family in this Christian race. No, 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 no. It's not to ridicule you. It's for you and I to reason together and see how we can make it to heaven because we must make it to heaven. Please know that no man can ever outgrow this temptation. Don't say, ah, hey, hmm. When I was younger, is that, it's not true. Yeah. Mm. The devil will continue to come again and again to tempt you, you know. So <laughs> Satan will not give up. And, and doing, uh, uh, you know, I want, I, I want to quickly look at a scenario. Sorry, I think this my computer is doing something that, that I don't understand. Praise the Lord. So I was talking about the fact that the goal of this message is not to, you know, to embarrass you or to condemn you in any way. But it was it's for us to be enlightened. And please note, no man can ever outgrow this temptation. I have said, I have said that the devil will continue to come over and over to you. Satan will be up and doing always, creating scenarios for the downfall of any Christian. He doesn't care how long you have been a Christian. He said, ah, it's for young convert. No. In fact, I want to say the higher you go, the higher <laughs> praise the living God. So sexual immorality, if left unchecked, will wreck your life. So how can a man be free from a pending destruction like this? And let us quickly look at the five scriptural steps to be free from sexual immorality. I want to quickly do this because my time is up. You must admit first, the first thing is that you must admit that, you know, you need help. So there's, there's no room for pretense and uh, being humble and uh, pretending to be holy. There's no room for it. Just let it go. What God knows, why are you hiding it? Say it to him as it is. He already knows it. 
He only wants you to tell him, to for, cry to him for help. Hallelujah. So pride will keep you in your sin. And killing you and will also be killing your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So, what I would advise that you humble yourself and you confess your sins to him and ask him for mercy and cry unto the Lord. The, 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 the King David, you know, in his, his encounter with uh, Nathan, after he had uh, uh, killed Uriah, uh, Uriah and has taken the wife, Nathan approached him and talk to him, you know. I don't want to go through the story. But because he has sin, the Bible said he cried unto the, in fact, he said he went into sackcloth and ashes. And he repented, and the Lord had mercy on him. That is to say that, that I don't think you have murdered, even if you have murdered, cry unto him. He is willing to forgive us. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So another thing that I will advocate is that you set aside a time for retreat. For yourself. You and God. And talk to him as you always feel. And you know. And study the word of God to equip yourself for the battle ahead. I will move on to say that sexual immorality weakens any man spiritually. And so you are open to an attack by the devil at any point in time. And most of the time, the result is an untimely death. The devil comes, keeps coming and keeps coming until he will finally take you. Praise the living God. I will also advocate that you read Psalm 51 while praying. And that is the Psalm of David. You know, when he had an encounter with um, Nathan, he prayed and begged the Lord for mercy. And so when you are having this retreat, please open to that Psalm 55, 51, and take time to pray on it. And it's, you know, it is a quiet time between you and God. Praise the Lord. I'm not saying you should pray in the church. You can't in your heart. Praise the Lord. But where this problem persists, you must seek for help. You must seek for help. And you may say, ah, I don't want my, uh, my weaknesses to be known. Do you know the person you are even talking to? Maybe he's also going through it. Hello? And don't forget that this feeling... It's normal. So when you see a picture on the wall, quickly take, in fact, within two to five seconds, begin to rebuke it. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Take off your face from it and begin to quote the scriptures. I, I, the Bible says, he that is born of God overcomes the wall. You will not overcome me. Praise the living God. You begin to quote those scriptures that you already have in your heart. I am a child of God. He that is from above is above all things. I'm above this temptation. You will not have power over me. Praise the living God. And the Bible says we should resist the devil. And he will flee from us. How do you resist the devil? It's by speaking the scriptures like the Lord Jesus Christ did. Back to the devil. You see a lady passing and you are busy looking at up and down, up and down, up and down. Immediately you look once and say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I shall not be in that bondage. Praise the living God. We are looking at practical ways of overcoming this kind of sin. Because from today, it shall not be mentioned with us in the mighty name of Jesus. One thing that I want to say and in my closing is that that the Lord Jesus Christ himself, God himself, is a dry cleaner. He can wash anyone, iron that person back to shape, dry you up, and remove every impurity in you. 
if only you are willing to let him do that work on you. And the Bible says the spirit and the bride says come. And let every man that hears this word come. Shall we be on our feet? The church of God, and I say the church universal, does not want to miss you. You are a member of this family and you cannot be missing. The Holy Spirit is saying, come. The saints who have departed are in heaven are saying, come. And the Bible says, you should come freely and take this wine and take this water without price and without money. Shall we close our eyes? It's a solemn time. I don't want anyone to pretend and say, no, the prayer is not for me. You have to pray now. It's everyone that is involved in it. You have to ask the Lord to help you. Show me mercy. Let me be, let me never be one of the statistics. Let me never be one of the statistics. The Bible says we are surrounded by such a cloud of weaknesses. They know that this word has come today. The word of God has come forth. And you have no excuse. Brethren, ask for mercy. Ask for mercy. Bible says that his hands are not too short that he cannot deliver. He is, the Bible says his ears are tilted. He's waiting to hear you tell him, I need your help, Lord. Tell him that you, you, you have fallen over and over and that you want to put a stop to it. You want to put a stop to it. It's possible to live a holy life. Even in this generation. The grace, the power and the strength is available. Because the Holy Spirit is available for you. Check. You can also give cash if you are in the sanctuary. And if you are giving online, you can employ our online means of giving. Hallelujah. Shall we be on our feet as we give?